Goals and Values How the Egregorial System Egregor. Control Your Goals Egregores refer to the level of the buddhic body. They are a kind of independent formations. They are inanimate but very rich in information and have a controlling function over the ozal body, the body of experience and cause and effect relationships. The causal body predetermines that the time that flows through the consciousness of every living being will be directed in a certain way, in a certain channel. It is through these channels that time and energy flow, paving the way for the achievement of goals. And time, as a vector of direction from the past to the future, is a source of power and strength for any egregorial system. The egregorial system in turn develops mechanisms that cause a person, the living consciousness, to direct its time towards the fulfillment of a particular goal, preferably voluntarily and without coercion thus confirming the rightness and goodness of that goal. Everything must be dedicated to something. Everything must be dedicated to a certain norm, a certain rule. And the more time a person devotes to that norm and that rule, the more he strengthens the egregore who sends him those norms and rules. Let us take the example of a totalitarian society, a society with very rigid patterns and rules of behavior, with a strong ideology that does not allow a person to go beyond this framework and to rethink these constants, which are usually very strict. A religious person must go through the most severe cataclysms of his own worldview in order to abandon religious ideas and begin to live not in the name of religion, but in the name of something else. A person who has lived all his life in a totalitarian environment, in very harsh paramilitary conditions, must also go through a certain shock, a very strong psychological cataclysm, in order to devalue the concepts that have been given to him by this environment. This cataclysm usually comes from below, from the level of the etheric and astral body. At the level of the etheric body, this cataclysm is caused by hormonal surges. That's why the rebellious age begins with puberty and hormonal changes. The astral body can also be a source of restructuring of one's consciousness. And this usually happens during the second hormonal surge, during adolescence, when everyone wants to destroy the world for no apparent reason. But even as we grow older, we regularly enter periods of decision-making, years of reassessing values, when we experience various life disasters. At the age of 30, 40, 50 there is usually a need to reassess and revise values, a whole system of values, and this causes certain changes in life. At this age people tend to change their field of activity, change families, countries, cities, that is, they seek change, their consciousness demands change, not so much because everything is energetically boring, but because there is a revision of values, it is a direct request. A demand, of one's own soul, of one's own structure of the I am, which is looking for reasons to live on. Because if no such reasons are found, the program will start to wrap up. And why is consciousness unable to find such reasons? Because the value that is supported by the buddhic body is not universal, and sooner or later it says, 
Here is the limit of my possibilities, I cannot arrange more events for you than I have programmed within my possibilities. Every egregore is a program. It has an idea in its core, for the sake of which it lives, and if it does not assume geographical, temporal or any other expansion of life, sooner or later you will run into an invisible wall. And then your egregore will say to you, go back and stop fooling around, or find a way to destroy my wall and go beyond my limits, and in the latter case, I will definitely be in your way, because you are my resource. I feed on your time and as long as you voluntarily invest your time in me, I live. But if you go away, and all the others go away after you, then I will have nothing to eat, and both I and my idea will perish. Sometimes the core of the egregore itself has a timer on how long it has to exist. Then those walls just fall apart. And sometimes certain viruses invade the egregorial system and force that timer to speed up. You know how it is in Hollywood movies, when the bomb timer suddenly fails and the main character has only four seconds to stop it. It's pretty much the same with such viruses. And I think you remember many episodes of the destruction of old systems, and the creation of new ones, from small companies or businesses, to huge systems such as states, religions, and other large formations, because everything comes to an end. The time of existence of a certain idea can only be prolonged if a person puts his strength and his life into it. And it only depends on the will of the person to break through this invisible wall or not. But back to the possibilities of the egregorial system. The egregorial environment has a limited number of possibilities. Of course, compared to human life, compared to the human mental realm, it has many more possibilities, because each egregore includes many people and not just one person. And the higher the egregorial system rises in the hierarchy, and I will tell you about the egregorial hierarchy in the next classes, the more people it is able to include in its idea. Moreover, an egregore can not only include a large number of people, but also hold them by force. Of course, from the outside it doesn't look like these people are being held by force, it looks like they are being included on a completely voluntary basis. But on closer inspection, this voluntary inclusion leaves people no choice. The person is born into a certain state, and the state is an egregore that immediately gives that person a certain belonging, citizenship. Or let's say a person is born into a certain system, for example the Abrahamic system, and actually no one asked him whether he wanted to belong to that system or not, he was immediately dedicated to a certain God. So you are already in the position of a servant. That means that all your time will belong to that particular religious system. And you have to try very hard to get out of that system. You have to remove from your own consciousness implanted values and beliefs which are very difficult to overcome. Especially when you've lived with them since birth and they've been imprinted in your brain every day, every second you live in that very system. There are, however, egregorial systems of lower levels. The period of their existence is shorter and they do not have as many possibilities. On the one hand, logic suggests that the egregorial systems of higher levels offer more possibilities. For example, the egregore of your state may give you more opportunities to achieve your goals than the egregore of your company. And this is true, but still the egregore of your state, like the egregore of your company, has the same quality, it is limited and it is finite. And even if these limits seem to be boundless, every egregore has its own limits, and because it has limits, 
они граничны. А раз они граничны, то склонен придерживаться определенных границ. These limits are called moral norms or systems of possibilities. And this system of possibilities works more effectively when it is voluntarily accepted by a person as an indisputable fact. I am involved in certain events at the moment. Why is that? Because everyone is involved. If we all live in the same state and certain events happen in that state, we all get into the same circumstances, we all participate in the same events. If I live with my family, then in one way or another I am involved in the events that take place in my family. And this approach is so natural to a person that they don't even try to think about why they are involved in these events. They take it as something irreversible. And why is that? Because each egregore is jealous and possessive like an old Jewish wife. And it doesn't even give you a chance to think about the fact that if there is one egregore, there is another, and if you interact with one, you can interact with another. How frightening and seditious it was for a Soviet person to think that it was possible to have dual citizenship. Well, firstly, it was impossible, and secondly, such a thought would never occur to them. And even today, many see it as a kind of betrayal of the homeland. And so the way a person interacts with different egregorial systems shows how strongly and deeply the beliefs of this or that system have been imprinted on his consciousness. Because it is the system that puts what are called preferences into his mind. These preferences find a logical basis in the mental body, which can describe anything. They can be confirmed by personal experience or the experience of other people in the causal body, which will also find arguments why certain beliefs, attitudes and moral values are right or wrong. And the higher in the hierarchy an egregore is, the more it will tell you that you can't combine it with anything else. That you can't combine two religions, that you can't combine two states, that you can't belong to more than one profession, for example, although nowadays it's more or less freely accepted. But there are still systems that look with great suspicion at a person who is, let's say, an economist and a chemist. You're either an economist or a chemist, you have to choose, you're either a housewife or a programmer. And it's the same with important values and beliefs, out of all the possible choices, we only have to choose one and make it our own. And we could generally agree with this if we were sure that these important values and beliefs were chosen naturally, in the process of shaping our own experience from the bottom up, as I've already mentioned. But there is no guarantee that some parts of the experience weren't implanted into the consciousness from above in a so-called directive way. And that is what we are going to work with. That is what we are going to try to find out. Are the goals, the beliefs that support those goals, and the experience that forms around that support personal and fulfilling? Or maybe that experience has been borrowed from egregores, parents, cultural environment, or some other source that has nothing to do with you. And even if it is, it's not your personal experience, it's not your personal property. The layer of consciousness between the mental body and the buddhic body that we are now beginning to explore 
is a very serious level of consciousness that will describe to you the whole picture of the world and reality in which you exist. All you have to do is perform simple actions that require nothing more than your will, attention, reason, persistence, and intelligence. 